All right, I don't want to end on a downer. All right, addiction's a downer. Let's end on something more positive. And I would like to end on love, because love is cool, right? And I'd like to talk about one of my very favorite studies that was done by a woman named Lucy Brown. Kind of sounds like there was a marriage in the Peanuts comic strip there, doesn't it? <laughs> the older people laughed at that. The younger people don't know what I'm talking about. So Lucy Brown, who's at Albert Einstein, had a very clever experiment. She put an ad on the campus paper and recruited young people who are madly, passionately in love in the first six months of a new relationship. They were hot to trot. They were obsessed. And she had them bring in a picture of their sweetheart and also a picture of a platonic friend who they had never slept with or anything like that, but who was very well known to them. And then they imaged the brain while looking at the picture of the platonic friend and while looking at the picture of the sweetheart. And then they did arithmetic, and they said, what's different about the sweetheart picture compared to the platonic friend picture? Because obviously, you just look at the sweetheart picture, well, some of that is just someone who's familiar, right? It's not sweetheart specific. So by subtracting one from the other, they're trying to get sweetheart specific. It's not a perfect experiment, but it's pretty good. So when people look at the face of their beloved, whom they are madly, passionately in love with, what do you see? Well, you see an activation of the pleasure circuit, not surprisingly. You see deactivation of the social cognition areas, of the evaluation areas. <laughs> right? So now, this completely comports with what we know about the subjective experience about being madly, passionately in love. Right? We're not looking with a completely objective vision upon, we're like, oh, it's okay, he's just been in jail, but it was just a minor offense, and <laughs> that sore on his lip, I'm sure it'll heal up soon, and, you know, I, you know, she didn't mean to do that thing with a broken bottle, and it's all, you know, it's all going to be okay. So, so, so that comports very well. So Lucy Brown first said, all right, well, but is this culture specific? So she went and did the same experiment again in Beijing. It was exactly the same as doing it in the Bronx. No different whatsoever. <laughs> she got gay people. First study was all with straight people. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, you're gay, you're straight, you're bi, you're Chinese, you're American. Same result. So. She did the experiment over now, and instead of recruiting people who are madly, passionately in love, she recruited old married couples, been together 20 years or more. And first she gave them a, a survey, and she said, do you feel the same level of passion and excitement about your sweetheart now as you did when you first met? And 19 out of 20 people say, well, no. I don't. I mean, it's good. I love them, and you know, I feel this great companionship and this warm bond, but it's not the same as that crazy, wonderful, lustful, obsessed time early on. And one out of 20 people says, nope, just the same. And you know, when I heard this, I think, you know, these people are watching too much daytime TV. They're watching too much Oprah. They just want to appear a certain way, right, in the eyes of the experimenter or their peers or whatever. That's not really true. So Lucy Brown puts everybody in the brain imaging experiment. So the 19 out of 20 people, they look at their picture of the beloved pleasure center, not much going on. <laughs> Is there any deactivation of those reasoning centers and those evaluation centers? No, they are seeing their, their spouse in the cold, cruel light of day, <laughs> warts and all. What about that one out of 20? Well, amazingly, you still saw that pleasure center activation in that one out of 20. I kind of thought they were bullshitting, right? I thought you wouldn't see anything. No, you still see it. Now, the, the, the deactivation of the pleasure centers, a little bit, but not so much. Not, not nearly as much as you see in the early area. But it brings up an interesting question then, which we don't know the answer to, which is, 
what do those people have? Were they born that way? What about their partner? Like if we could haul their partner in there, would you find couples where both of them are the one out of 20? Uh, are they that way because they have a particularly good relationship? We don't know the answer to this. Uh, these are, are things yet to uh, be determined. And uh, hopefully this is the new frontier of pleasure research. And maybe in a few years I can come back and, uh, and tell you how it turned out. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'd be happy to take questions.